Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are back again with another Dragonair video and in this video we'll be going over the event bosses. Uh, so we have this event right now where we are supposed to collect these amethyst crystals, right? And we will be able to get Utior in this. Uh, now it, the event is actually pretty difficult from what I've seen and yeah, it's, it's definitely not as favorable to us F2Ps or low spenders as you would want. Uh, the good thing is like, so you have these six bosses that you can challenge, right? You have, we'll be focusing more today on Ripkias, uh, or Ripkas, whatever his name is. And he's going to be taking more poison damage. So if you have a poison team, this is probably meant for you more so than the other players. I will be covering all bosses. I'll try to get as many as possible, but I did manage a run right now and I was able to do quite a significant amount of damage. So the way that you want to place, right? So what does this boss do? So first off, he has this double stun, right? So when you place it, uh, you will have like two of these stuns placed. Uh, two of his skills places stun in this three, in this wide range, right? In this three by three range. And it becomes very difficult for poisons because like, for example, like I'm using Lothair and if he gets keeps getting stunned, it's like the damage is just not there. So when I first started the fight, I was close to, I think, around 15 million, 20 million. Then I rose to 30 and then in the last run I did 35, 36. No, last run I did 56 million, sorry. And this run we'll see what else we can get, right? Uh, basically what you want is to have him target somewhere in this direction, right? And what this will do is that forces the stun in this range, somewhere here, right? It's not going to affect my lot here. And you will see that, that, you know, it's not going to affect him. And Durango, I'm going to place here for now. I had Vecania, but I want to try something as well on the stream, on the video actually, and see how it goes. And we have Ogok here. He is going to be removing buffs, uh, debuffs, sorry, and what we're really looking for is something with a heal if you don't have this team i'm gonna give you a free to play team as well right for this one if you have these champions use them there's shink there's corin who do excellent amount of poisons right and then there is ellie um where is ellie ellie he deals derivative damage when he's attacking enemies and the poison so pretty good choices there and for your support cast if you don't have um, these two legendaries you go with let me go with poison. So you go with Furbath. And you go with where's the other Waikuk? You go with Waikuk. So Waikuk is going to provide you with uh you know debuffs. Uh so debuff removal, which is really important in this fight because the boss places a lot of debuffs. Uh I think at most point it will be three of the units that will be affected. And you'll see how the placement actually helps it. And he's gonna heal each ally as well. So he has also has attack penalty too, which is perfect for this fight. And we have accuracy penalty too, which is also great for this fight. Because if you are able to resist some of these debuffs, but I wouldn't recommend you building a team specifically around resisting the debuffs. Just go in and see how much damage you can do, right? So if you got if you got this team, like it's pretty good, right? And if you are even don't have some of these epics that I pointed out, you can go with something like Hexandra, right? Hexandra removes debuffs from her uh, whenever she's healing, right? So whenever 41, the healing is increased and she also has one debuff removal. Not the best debuff removal, but still it's something. And you can always go with Sigrid. Sigrid is an amazing rare. She is kind of bugged right now. That's why I didn't give her any rating in my tier list. I don't think that her damage is justified. Uh, but yeah, there are plenty of options for you to try out. It's not just about legendaries that I'm showcasing. It's... And I'm not even saying that your damage is going to be that high. It's not going to be that high, but you will be able to get the crystal. I can guarantee you this much, that if you build a team around Corin, Shank, Furbath, uh, you know, you can even bring in somebody like, where did she go? Why do I not see her? Here, Sifris, who can revive people. She can also heal people, right? So it's this is also pretty good. If you don't have this one, you Furbath is alone going to be enough. So without further ado, let's jump into the fight and let's see. So two of these skills are going to be stunning, right? We don't want that at all. 
So now my Durango and my Lothair is not stunned, if you see. Only these two are stunned, which is perfect for me because I don't really care for that, right? And I'm going to be timing my Ogok ultimate right before the boss's ultimate so I can have that, um, you know, unkillable on. But regardless to say, like, this is not the one all team. There are plenty of options you can see that my Lothair is not taking the stun. And if you have all ranged units, you want to spread them out. So you don't give the boss one particular target to fight. Right. And I'm going to be placing my unkillable now. So now I'm mortal. This is what I really want in the fight. I'm not going to be going into specific timings for this one because this is a one run in a week. Uh, maybe next week I'll try to time it. But I'm actually curious if we go back. If there's any other way I can place Durongo and he does not get stunned. So I'm sure my Lothair is fine, but if I place him right behind him. You might be thinking like, you know, they're going to run up anyways, but sometimes it does help. Uh, no, so it's not helping. So it's fine because Durongo gains a lot of ult meter anyway, so I'm not really too much worried about his ultimate. All I care about is, uh, you know, Lothair's ultimate because he's hitting the most. So he's already done like six, four and a half million, five million damage to the boss. And that's what you're basically looking for. So he's going to try to do heal reduction and everything. I don't really want to ultimate right now. I'm just going to soak up the damage till then. Early on, the damage isn't that much. So you can really go berserk. Bring in derived damage dealers. If you have like somebody like uh, Eli, he's exceptional in these kind of fights. Even on Vortex, he's going to out damage a lot of other champions in the game. Just because of this derived damage is pretty nuts in this game, right? And Ogok also has a skill where he's constantly removing debuffs. But if you don't have Ogok, like I said, you can go with Waikuk. Waikuk is amazing. Uh, so there's like option. There's a free to play option in this team. I am not using it because of course I don't have the stamina. I don't have the pots to build those things. But if you do definitely build them out, they're worth it. Especially for this fight, this fight is going to go on for like a few weeks. Each week you will have to do something with this. So yeah, definitely worth to spend some resources on them. So three of my units are going to take damage. That's fine. Ogok is not taking anything, which is perfect. And we are up to 21 million. And there we go with the 22 million, right? Yeah, that should cover it. And it's really the stun that is annoying. If you don't have somebody like Durango to use, if you have, if you don't have a Lothair, right? Place Durango where I had my Lothair, right? If you have a Durango. And if you have ranged Poisoner, that's all better because you don't really need to care about the stun. You only want a tank, which is going to be your fur bath, right up in his face. Or if you have somebody like Garrett, a uh, Garrett or Gareth, somebody is his name, I forgot, in the Poison Epic, you could use him as well. So there are plenty of options. It's it's not as uh, complicated as you know people make it seem out. Like in your first season, of course you're gonna struggle. If this is your first season, you're free to play, you're low spender, whatever you are. But you are definitely gonna struggle. You're gonna feel the pain because you know you haven't had that time that the beta players had to build out their teams. Like the Starlight Crystals alone, we had a lot. I have a lot of them still saved and, you know, there are a lot. Like the game gives you like close to like 400, 500 crystals, uh, dice, starlight dice to summon every season. So you do get a lot of epics as you progress. So don't really feel discouraged about this thing. This is just fine. It's, it's the way the game is supposed to be. <clears throat> it's a season over season game. Each season you make a bit of progress and you... You know, you keep on going and you try to get to the next level and so on and so forth. So that's the whole gist of it, right? Attack down is really important. So you do need somebody with attack down. Again, Waikuk. I can't sell that epic more. Uh, he's pretty amazing for what he does. So definitely go with somebody like Waikuk. Now, I'm just using unkillable to survive for my Lothair. My Lothair is not being hit, so I'm just like happy that it's it's he's only going to be surviving on unkillable. Uh, yeah, he has 
heel reduction all the time so again we got hit by a heel reduction that's fine we are not going to die uh durango might die yeah yeah durango was going to die anyways oh i misclicked but we are above the 56 million damage uh there is a time limit to this fight i think we have 1 minute more to go so i'm hopefully going to be timing all of my skills from now on and because Lothair is just like yeah he's done i wish i had current for this fight i i didn't build him he's amazing he's also a range unit so the only range unit that i would have been relying on would have been uh, the only melee unit i would have been relying on would have been Lothair. um as you can see like there was just no way like i can put in two uh two melee units two melee dps units in front and yeah that's the problem uh, but we are still carrying on hopefully for 30 62 million damage right and this is how most of these fights oh shit i stopped to click it but this i'll try and run again but uh this is how the fight is supposed to be right you are not going to survive for this long don't kid yourself if you're like um if you're free to play you don't have these champions you're not going to survive it's ogok what makes it so special it's Urgander, who's like providing this amazing tank in the game probably one of the best tanks in the game so obviously you're not gonna have this which is fine but at least this way we get to see an interesting mechanic right so the way my whole team was being targeted by the boss was the first three right but if the wherever the more units he can target he's gonna move there so you gotta keep in mind where he's gonna target and yeah you you can do some good work so let's just go back and again talk about the team recommendations if you have like epics so i'm going to be discussing epics because rares you will get a lot in this game right Corin, uh amazing for this forbath is going to be amazing shank horus they're all good dps units they have poisons but your main main damage dealer in this fight is going to be ellie right ellie has ellie has derived damage which no other champion has right no other of the epics have that so you really need to level up your ally go with ally corin bring in furbath bring in Sif, uh not sifris wykak and bring in another healer if you want if you not survive if you feel like you need another healer i would personally go with another dps like shink or corin right uh shink sorry uh we already have corin so we have ally who's amazing then we have corin then we have furbath so that's three four is going to be shank and then Vikak. these are the epics that are game changing for this but you can also bring in the fire ones if you really need them uh notable mention in fires is isolde she will bring in the attack down if you don't have a um a good tank you can build her with resist because resist and accuracy so this it will be the holy hunter set right you place this attack down you you have a defense up on yourself which is what the defense up to but yeah so she will help with survivability if you need team survivability um one another epic is pretty great here is going to be adolphus and the reason adolphus is so good here is because shields are not counted as buffs in this game so you really don't need uh you don't, you don't need to worry about the buff prohibition that rip ripcast place right you can always get this huge shield on your champions and you know you can survive for longer but that was pretty much up for it today uh, i'll post the other bosses soon as i'm going over them as well but yeah catch you all later